Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. Let's have a look at the original gangster, the TX 144. If you've been following my channel for a while, you've probably heard me talk about this a couple of times as being a less than ideal project for a beginner. The reason for that is that if you want to do really basic stuff like clean the mixer, um, it's a bit of a palaver to get in there. The way this is built, you have to remove the record and playback amplifier in order to access the mixer board. And then there's a metal plate over the top of the uh, mixer, which also needs to be removed before you can get in there with you know, deoxy, compressed air, that kind of thing. So it just makes it a bit more of a kind of tedious and long-winded process to open and uh, you know, you're know you that much more likely to lose screws and this kind of thing. Although in a way that means that this is built like a tank, I'm not sure that that extra inconvenience for the service person and the weight that it adds actually contributes proportionately to the strength. Ultimately this weighs about, I know they're about 10 kilograms package because I've had to post them before. So if you drop that, then the plastic case is still going to break. So in a, in a sense, they're not actually any more robust than later models, which were, I suppose, a bit more flimsily built. The other thing that's difficult about this is the cassette transport. Just because it's the prototype, I guess they were trying things out, the placement of things, and it's it's difficult to get at the belts. You're going to see that the entire belt mechanism is enclosed by metal plates. It's not easily accessible with just a couple of screws removed the way it is in later models. Even the 244 is much easier to work on. And uh, the particular Achilles heel that I found with this, which has prevented me from fixing, I think I've had four of these before and I only got, I only got one of them working and three other three I didn't because I couldn't get this mechanism working because there weren't proper spare parts available. The real mechanism by which I mean the way that the take up and supply reel are turned and playback, fast forward and rewind works. You'll see when we open it up, um, but it's way, way, way more complex, way more moving parts, way more things to wind down or go gooey than on subsequent designs. They realised, oh, we kind of over-engineered this one and they simplified later designs. This unit's on loan to me, apparently... This is crackly, but it still works. And all of this works, it's just squeaky. Squeaking to me implies probably the idler tires are becoming kind of hard. So we'll begin as always by taking off the knobs and the assumption that we're going to be cleaning the mixer later. And I hope these will just all pull off quite easily, which they seem to. Um, much like the 244, there are little what would we call that material? It's halfway between fabric and paper, but there's little dust protector things that you'll be able to get off once you get the plastic case off. So these knobs are gonna come off, but uh, these buttons, will they? Oh yeah, they come off. We could take them off now or later. I might actually leave those on and make the buttons slightly less brittle. So I'll continue to do that. When we come back, these will be all removed and we'll look at flipping this onto a pillow to protect the surface and opening the rear case. I've just removed all the screws from the back case. There's three types. There's 10 of these longer, narrow, ferrule ones, one shorter, narrow, ferrule one, and four wider, ferrule ones. So the long ones are going into three slots along here, um, three slots along the top here, and uh, two on each side. The short one is in the centre here, and then the four wider ferrule ones are along this lip near the VU meters. And with that rear panel off, you're going to see something like this. Pretty clean, actually. Um, I think I do have the schematic for this somewhere. I haven't looked at it recently, but I opened enough of these and these things start to look somewhat familiar. You can see that this very first board that you're seeing is the R slash P amp, so that's the record and playback amplifiers. You can see this needs to be removed before you can get the mixer. Somewhat the case in the 246, but um, you, not something you need to deal with with the 244, because the 244, this functionality is in two vertically placed boards down the centre. 
this has also got the, you can see it's got the power filtering in here. So this is the mains transformer. So that'll be stepping down from, you know, 240 volts in my region. You can see here's your slow blow fuses. There's your rectifier. And these will be your main reservoir capacitors that are smoothing out the wave shape that's been um, produced by the rectifier. And you can see that there's four identical strips here and uh, identical sections here. This is going to be your erase oscillator, 60 kilohertz it says. And these little relays are going to change whether the record and playback head is attached to the record or the playback sections of the amplifier. Four inductors here which will be pairing with um, capacitors. And that will be the individual oscillators for the record AC bias. Either Dolby and your op amps or op amps and your Dolby. Somewhat similar to what you're going to see in most recorded playback amplifier circuits. Transport logic down here. And here's your transport. So this is what I was saying about the like metal plate kind of covering all the belts, making it pretty hard to change them. I can feel that there's little rough burrs on this belt here already. This one feels kind of loose. This one for the counter, I think that is down here, feels a little bit dry. Yeah, you can tell it's the counter because it's got this revolving magnet and you can see a transistor on this little PCB here, so that's the whole effect. Anyway, I will move on and start to unplug this, remove the trap. As you can see, I have cut all the various cable ties. I've got my footage to refer to, take a photograph before you do this, but there's uh, certain cables. But without cutting those cable ties, it's very difficult to see what wire goes where. For the sake of avoiding being too long-winded, I've detached all the cables and uh, unscrewed all the screws without the camera rolling. Here's what I did. Um, I found I also had to cut a cable tie here because this cable was kind of curled up like that. Memory stop control is plugged in there. Both this plug and plug here requires a bit of force to open. Um, I'm using a pair of teeth pliers to get those apart. Not a brute force tactic that I would use on most parts of a Porter Studio, but it's internal, so any kind of teeth marks I've left in there is not really going to make any difference to the owner. There was a earth screw attached there. I've put E plus star dot 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 to mixer because it looks like it's going to the mixer it's just to remind myself in reassembly and then there was a cable tie here so i've put a c slash t beside that hole the screws that i removed from those two holes are this narrow ferrule brassish looking type the other ones i'm about to show you the location of i think i just dropped that screw there are pretty much the same but they've got a washer on them as well the location of those were if i lift this out slightly so you can see better one here going directly at the chassis uh one just behind this belt here pointing at it now and going into that mounting post there on this side these two holes are going into these two holes in the chassis and then these two are into these mounting posts here in terms of removing cables, obviously you've got your two magnetic heads. Uh, this is the arrays head. It's marked as such on this PCB and you can see it's a shorter wire. Whereas this one's coming up to this one here and it says 2R slash P standing for record playback head. If I quickly push that down, you can lift that up just by gently prying with a flathead screwdriver until it comes off like so. And other than that big cable, the only other two cables that I need to remove were at the two sides of this bottom most um, control PCB. This one slotted in here and then this one was kind of strung underneath all these other ones but it eventually goes to this location here. So with those unplugged The transport comes away from the rest of the unit completely. And so before we get into the absolute nitty gritty, a couple of interesting things, well interesting to me anyway, to notice. It's a bit like the three motor system on a 244, but instead of the control motor, we've got a massive solenoid. That solenoid's controlling the retraction and um, lifting of the head. You can see that when I physically move that head assembly, that, that is moving the inner part 
with that solenoid. I presume that on later iterations of this design that they moved to a motor here because hitting the actual tape less hard with the pinch roller and the heads. I hope you can see just how inaccessible a lot of these parts are compared to later designs. We'll test my memory in due course but I seem to remember there's about four at least five of these screws that we need to take away to open this and then it comes away quite awkwardly in such a way that the centre of that solenoid comes away with one half and we'll be able to see this much more clearly but basically um, that real motor is turning a belt here which is hitting a little idler in here which is turning this plastic hub here which is turning tires on the two reels. Yeah, it's just quite a convoluted process compared to later designs. And uh, that, that's the part of this mechanism that's um, snookered me in the past. It's caused me to abandon three out of the four 144s I've had in the past and just say, I'm sorry, I can't fix this.